Welcome back to Whisper Gaming ASMR, and we are returning to Minecraft today. We're also going to be having a hard candy during this episode, but I think I'm only going to have one Jolly Rancher instead of three this time. Decently late at night, and I don't want to have a ton of sugar before going to bed. So, after this Jelly Rancher, I'll probably switch over to uh, drinking water. But anyway, in the last video, we started our Minecraft adventure and started building the small base. Also, please uh, pardon those gurgling sounds. Oh, I've explained this on a couple videos, but. Probably most people haven't seen all my videos. I have like a weird thing where I like almost never burp. I burp maybe like five times a year. But in exchange for never burping, I get like weird throat gurgling sounds, which is really annoying for doing ASMR, but that's what that is. So sorry if that's too much information. But I'm not alone. Every time I go to a wedding, almost every time, that somehow comes up at the reception or the whatever it is after the wedding. And I've almost always met at least one other person that happens to. There's another one right there. So the lame joke I like to make is there's dozens of us, which if you've watched Arrested Development, you'll get that. And if not, I'll be like, what are you talking about? But anyway, enough about my weird, I guess technically, medical condition. Um, I'm going to work on building out this base. I should also build a bed, but as you can see, I lack wood. I definitely should have cut down more trees before coming down in this canyon. So, Definitely should have made a bet if I die. There's no way I'm gonna find this again. But whatever. 40 minutes of progress lost. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna make my way back up to the surface, chop down some trees. And then come back down here. And my goal is to make like a shoot goes straight up to the surface so I don't when I need to go up again. I am um, wait did I even grab the cooked meat? Where did I put my cooked meat? Wow, that's a lot of copper. something so I can easily find my way back to this ravine. I think this would be considered a ravine. I'm trying to think of other, I don't even know if interesting is the right word. I guess a lot of people, at least when I watch ASMR, I'm trying to go to sleep. So maybe I should talk about the most boring stuff possible to help you fall asleep. reading yesterday. So this year I have been, actually since last fall, I've been trying to go through all of John Steinbeck's books. So the guy that wrote the, like Rapes of Wrath and Of Mice and Men are probably his most well-known books since a lot of people read them and 
high school. Actually, uh, Of Mice and Men was one of like three books that I actually read in high school. I almost, I barely read any of the books assigned to me in high school, which is not a super humble brag, but I did get a four on both of my English SAT uh, AP tests, so I did a pretty good job without reading the books, which makes me uh, question, oh crap, it's going to be day, I mean it's going to be night, which uh, does make me question how valuable are AP classes, if I could just bullshit the whole thing and still get really good grades. But anyway, I've finally gotten to reading these past few years. I was never much of a reader growing up. And uh, I read, e randomly read East of Eden last fall. I can't even remember where I got the suggestion from. But since then, I've been, then I read um, Grapes of Wrath and Of Mice and Men. I've started reading his more obscure books. I just made a goal for myself to uh, read all of his books. So I am. Um, I just finished up. I think book number ten or eleven. Sorry, I gotta murder this guy. And I think he has around twenty-three books. So I'm about at the halfway mark. But uh, I just finished his book called The Red Pony. Which is pretty good. I don't know, it's my f one of my favorites of his that I've read by. Um, I really liked Indubious Battle. That was a couple books ago. That one was really good. Beast of Eden was really good. Grapes of Wrath was really good. I did like Of Mice and Men. I really liked it when I read it in high school, but compared to his other books, I'm like, eh, that was just really short. Like, I'm a very slow reader, and uh, I could read the book in about the amount of time it takes to watch the actual movie, which is what I, I, I've read the book and then watched the movie. And it was kind of weird, because I'm like, I've never seen a movie that follows a book. Like, it follows almost exactly word for word. Um, but anyway, uh, Red Pony is pretty good. It's about this kid, Jody. Well, it's hard to even say what it's about. I don't want to spoil the whole thing, but it's just kind of about some unfortunate events that befall him in his childhood. One involving a red pony. Oh god. 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 Holy shit. I need to eat food. Wow, that was a panic attack. that doesn't ruin these ASMR videos when I like low-key freak out. Um, what are those down there? Oh, the salmon. But yeah, this is about a kid Jody and he gets a pony and some things that, well, I wonder if that does damage. And then just some other events that happened in his childhood. But it's pretty good. And it's like back in the day. Uh, before, like, oh, that's not good. Before electricity. So I'm assuming late 1800s, early 1900s. And it ends with the boy's grandfather visiting. And his dad hates when he visits because all he does is talk about when uh, he led, like, a wagon train across the country during the frontier times, and, uh, just all the stories are really repetitive, but anyway, it ends with the dad is, like, at breakfast, and he talks about how it's so annoying that the grandfather always, like, says things over and over, and that those times are over, and he's... You should just forget about him and stop boring people with his stories, basically. And the grandfather hears him. And it, like, really is up 
upsets him, obviously. And then he's just telling Jody how those times are over, and maybe I'm kind of projecting my own things here, but almost, he like almost pities the current generation because there's nothing left to discover, like the uh, American Western frontier was like the last unknown discovery that Americans really had. Like, obviously, that land is already discovered by Native Americans, which, I guess just a random fun fact, I am partially Native American, like, enough where I can join my family's tribe. But anyway, I thought that was interesting that just like 200 years ago, Americans wanted to expand west, and it was completely unknown territory, like, I don't know, it's like basically what the space is for us, like it was a mystery, they had no idea what was out there, there could have been giants, or, I mean, there were probably were giant bears and things like that, and who knows what was there, that like, things go extinct, there could be things from legends that were actually real, that be completely disregarded nowadays, but... I saw it's interesting that it wasn't that long ago that America was like a new frontier to be explored, and now there really isn't any place that hasn't explored, I guess. Maybe like deep parts of the jungles or Amazons or things like that, maybe. But with satellites and just modern technology and everything, there's not really much mystery left in the world. And I thought that was kind of cool about that book. So, yeah. There's a random ramble for me that hopefully helps you fall asleep. But anyway, back to the game. What am I, how am I looking on wood? Not that much. Um, oh wait, don't you build ladders with the sticks? I might have enough, but... I just really don't want to die before I make a bed and go to sleep. God, there's so many monsters out here. But yeah, before that, I read Tortilla Flats. I, w I prefer to pronounce it Tortilla Flats. I don't know how it's actually pronounced. I feel like Tortilla Flats sounds way better than Tortilla Flat. But that was like a fun book. It wasn't like super deep. It was basically just about this guy Danny and like his friends and basically just like homeless bums that all they're concerned with is finding a way to get their hands on wine and a little bit of food every day so they can drink and sit around and not do anything besides like drink and eat but just like follows their lives and some good luck they encounter and bad luck and it's just I don't know kind of a fun book and apparently that's um that was John Steinbeck's first First financial success. And I believe it was his fourth book to be published. I did read like a little bit of the intro. The intros are like the forwards in those books. And most of John Steinbeck's books are like insanely long. Like 10% of length of the book is those forward, so I typically do skip them. But I started reading some of them for, I read like, maybe the, a quarter of the one for The Red Pony before I got bored. But, yeah, I think John Steinbeck was in his mid-30s before he really found any success with, when he wrote tor Tortilla, Tortilla Flats. I'm gonna call it Tortilla Flats, I prefer that, so... I might be wrong and sound like an idiot, but I think it sounds better. But yeah, so, he wrote three full books before that, and, uh, yeah, I was still doing, like, hard labor jobs, and was completely unknown, and he was still, I think, relatively unknown after Tortilla Flats. It took him a while to become a known author, and then... I think sticks falling off is a new thing. I don't think that ever used to happen. Um, yeah, 
it's just kind of like I like hearing the backstories of famous people. It's like I think it's really interesting to hear about their lives before they're famous and just like he's one of the most prolific writers in American history and he has a Nobel Prize and everything and just thinking of probably at one point, probably at several points, he uh, probably felt like a failure and didn't think there's a chance that he'd ever make it, and then he did. And I just find that very inspiring. I'm not saying I want to get to the level of John Steinbeck or anything like that, but just for my own personal goals, a lot of times they feel impossible or like I'm delusional for even trying to achieve them, but then I uh, read the stories of other people that have made it, which, I mean, what is even making it? I don't even think, I don't know, I don't want to be famous. I think that being famous would uh, have a lot of downsides to it, but I would like to be able to make a living doing things I enjoy, so that's making it for me. But yeah, just reading his story and knowing that he's like 35 before things really started working out for him gives me more hope for my life and my goals. So that was another nice aspect to reading some of his books. It's just learning more about his life. Which before I started reading his books, I was mostly reading nonfiction. I was reading a lot of biographies and I was starting to get burnt out on it, so I wasn't really reading for a while. And then getting back into fiction really got me back into reading. So if you were a reader and you've kind of got burnt out or you haven't ever really been to reading, I definitely recommend experimenting with different types of books because um, if you find the right type of book, it's reading is very enjoyable and very rewarding. And uh, I highly recommend reading John Steinbeck. If you want a short book, I would recommend The Moon is Down. I think that's probably one of my favorite short ones of his that I've read. And then I really like In Dubious Battle. Um, East of Eden is very good. Grapes of Wrath is very good. Um, God, I've read so many of his books now, it's hard to keep track. Uh, I did like... Henry Rowe and Sweet Thursdays, those are pretty decent. I don't know if they're my favorite, but I haven't really read one of his books that I haven't liked yet. Um, what else? There's definitely some other ones in there that I'm not thinking about. But yeah. But some of the document uh, documentaries, some of the biographies I've read, wasn't really, I guess, a biography, but Pete Seeger in his own words. I talked about Pete Seeger in the last episode, and how he inspired me to start learning banjo. But uh, Pete Seeger in his own words is just like a collection of his writings over his life. And uh, that's basically like an autobiography. I really enjoyed that. I should actually read that again. Um... I read Benjamin Franklin's autobiography. That's really good. It's not even that long. Unfortunately, he, um, he died before he finished writing it, so it's kind of a cliffhanger. Um, let's see. I read Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers' biography. That one was good. I kind of want to go back and read that as well. Jim Henson's biography. Well, I technically, I listened to the audiobook for that. But that one was pretty good. I started Dr. Seuss's, but I haven't finished that. It was kind of dry. Oh, I started the audiobook. I do have the actual book, too. So I should read that at some point. I feel like there's a bunch of other ones. I read Victor Wooten's The um, Music Lesson, which isn't completely a biography. But uh, it 
kind of is. I read um, Quincy Jones's Twelve Notes by Quincy Jones. That book was good. Um, I started, I guess it's not a biography, but Rick Rubin's new book. I think it's called The Creative Act. I have the audiobook for that. I started, but I haven't got very far. I just had a really hard time getting back into nonfiction. I feel like there's a bunch of other biographies too, but I can't really think of them right now. Um, what was that? For the zombie? After I finish up with John Steinbeck, though, I think I want to go through all of Kurt Vonnegut's books. Because um, I've read, I think, four or five of his books already, and I really like them. And I actually have his whole collection in hardcover. But I've been really enjoying reading on my Kindle. It's just so much more convenient especially since I mostly read at night while my girlfriend's sleeping. So, the Kindle makes that way easier. But yeah, so, that's all about <laughs> the books I'm reading. Not sure if being boring is good or bad, since these videos are, in theory, helping you relax and hopefully go to sleep. Or at least that's why I watch them. some sand so I can make a window. Completely forgot about glass. But yeah, if you have any book recommendations, or if you also enjoy John Steinbeck or Kurt Vonnegut or any of the any of the books I have mentioned. Drop a comment. I'd love to talk to anyone about these books because I've not found many other people like they're super popular books, but I've not met many other people my age that are reading them or have read these books. So I'd be down to chat with anyone about them. Wow, I feel like I've like hit a gold mine, maybe. I was missing out all along by not making bases and ravines. I feel like this playthrough is pretty disorganized so far. Oh yeah, a bed. That's what I need to do. I need to make a bed. I swore it was wool. Oh, right there. I'm blind. Do I need all the 
the same freaking wall. Guess can I make a brown bed? Socks. Can I make a gray dye? Yellow dye. Bone meal, brown dye. Well. That's dumb. Why can't I have a mismatch color bed? Well, can I at least make a ladder? Start making ladders. this way. sand or something on top of this. Which that's definitely not an impossibility. Is there also is there like a way to just like stand on the ladder? episode, talked about books. What else? My job's not very exciting. 
exciting. I do sales for a tech company, which, uh, not the most exciting job in the world. Oh, that's cool. They have different door. Oh, I really like Acacia. Is that how you say that? I really like the Acacia door. Maybe I'll replace my doors. Sales is not the most exciting job. Oh, wait. Light gray. Okay, we might be in luck here. Crap. What the heck? I definitely had. I definitely had that plant. Did I drop it somewhere? Tech sales definitely not the most exciting job, but there are much worse jobs out there. So it's the best job I've ever had. I'm very grateful for it. But uh, not a ton of exciting content to talk about there. Basically like a glorified telemarketer is how I would put it. way better than I think it probably should for how hard the work is. So yeah, job. A ton of to talk about there. Talked about books. Talked about music. This is my other hobby. Recent hobby, but yeah. Playing, playing games and doing ASMR. I guess I could talk about exercise. Um, I've been very bad about that since Christmas. I can't remember if I talked about it in this video or the past one. Kind of sometimes run together. Um, how do you make a crossbow? String, tripwire hook. Interesting. Uh, I also got something in my eye. Uh, making my left eye water. But yeah, I did get decently into exercise during well, actually, right before the pandemic, which was pretty lucky timing for me that I got into intermittent fasting and exercise right before the pandemic happened, which is good since, like many people, I spent a majority of my time at home alone with food. Um, but yeah, I'm a big fan of yoga. I've never actually done yoga at a yoga studio. So I do wonder how I'd like it, like with other people. But I've done yoga pretty regularly. Sorry, I'm like rubbing my left eye because it keeps watering. Um, yeah, so I do really like yoga. I've like messed around. Like most of the workout exercises I've done in the past year or two years now, basically, kind of since COVID, I've been uh, through the Apple Fitness Plus workouts, which I, I do really enjoy. They're super convenient, especially when you work from home. But I've messed around with some of their uh, Pilates workouts, which are way harder than I expected, at least for me. I like the core workouts, and I was doing some of their strength workouts. I also have a kettlebell. I do like doing like kettlebell swings and farmer carries. Um, and yeah, and then I kind of have lightly gotten to running. Like I've started running two miles semi-regularly, like a couple times a week. I definitely want to start doing it more once um, the weather, once it gets warmer. Oh, oh nice. Made it to the top, but I'm dying. Hopefully. Oh, I gotta put a trap door up here, I just realized. Shit. Um, yeah, but I'm not like I did before COVID started. I was like going to a gym and lifting weights, like doing deadlifts and dumbbells and stuff like that. But since COVID started, I haven't, um, been to a 
gym. Kind of like doing my exercises at home now. But I'm like much more into like the functional type of stuff. Like the only reason I really don't enjoy exercise that much, I do enjoy the feeling after it's over. But aside from that, not a huge exercise. Oh sh shit. That could have been very bad. Whoa. Wow. Jesus. Well, we'll just uh, pretend that never happened. And I didn't just almost die. I need to get a bed made. functional exercise. I, uh, the only reason I work out is for longevity, basically. Uh, I don't want to be like a feeble old person. So that's what makes me at least exercise some. If there was a pill I could take, that would, um, because I never had to exercise, I'd probably take that pill. But I do need to get back into it because the longer I don't, the harder it's going to be to get back into it. And I definitely can't go back to never exercising again. But once the weather's nicer, I want to start running more and doing like I take my kettlebell and there's this really nice um, park right down the street from my apartment so I go there with my kettlebell and just like basically walk around with it um, and it's like a, supposedly I'm not a fitness expert but from what I've read it's a full body exercise and uh it's like isometric as well, since you're only carrying the kettlebell on one side. So it like works your core and stuff. So I enjoy doing that. Also helps me get out of the house since I am probably on paper technically a recluse since I've started working from home. But it's also the winter and very cold and windy here. So every day when I go for want to go for a walk, I look and it's like freezing cold and there's like 13 mile per hour winds, so I'm like, yeah, I don't think that's going to be worth it. So once it's nice again, then I will start getting back outside. But yeah, if you don't exercise, definitely not preaching, but I highly recommend at least going for walks and stuff like that. That's kind of how I started, and it does, I mean, I am not by no means jacked or fitness buff or anything like that, but I did not exercise for a majority of my life, and I think that, like, I feel like things definitely did improve once I started exercising, so even if it's just going for a walk or, like, doing a five-minute stretching routine or something, I highly recommend at least trying it out and seeing how it feels, and I mean, it's not like you're going to probably feel the effects immediately, besides just, like, the good feeling you get after you finish exercising, but if you stick with it for like a month, uh, there's a good chance you'll probably feel some like positive effects like throughout your entire life, so I don't want to be preachy, but yeah, just recommend giving it a try if you're not an exercise person. I did hear this advice once. Um, on a podcast of this guy, Duncan Trussell, who's a comedian that I think is very funny and kind of wise. But he says now whenever he wants to, he has the urge to give advice to someone, he just applies it to himself instead. And uh, I can definitely be a little preachy sometimes, so I have tried to uh, take that advice, which is kind of not hypocritical, but the fact that he gave advice about not giving advice is kind of
kind of a, I don't know if conundrum is the right word or idiom or whatever, but yeah, so do with that what you will. Wow, I have a ton of copper. Can you make copper tools? There's only iron tools. Why are there no copper tools? What the f what do you use copper for then? Besides a block of raw copper, which I, oh, I need raw copper for. Duh. What the hell do I do with copper then? Oh, was copper not even a thing? Is that why I'm like, copper looks different? Was it? Is it because it was only iron before? respawn point did not make a ton of progress this time but hey we have a base started we have a direct pathway up to the surface is there any way I could get sand really quick I would like to make a window let's so see if we can go get a little bit of sand and then we'll call it there oh I do have another hobby Photography, so maybe I'll save that for the next one since I already seem to be struggling to come up with things to talk about besides this, like what's currently going on in the game and talking about the channel, which I have a feeling might be kind of boring. But yeah, I'm just hoping I get some type of feedback from you at some point. Because I'm completely flying blind here. And I have no idea if what I'm saying is remotely what anyone wants to hear. But I'm doing my best to be entertaining. Or I guess relaxing. sand over by this water. Watch out! Oh, random thing, but the uh, sword just made me think of a diamond sword, made me think of a weird chain of events in my brain. Anyway, I have found like a new niche on YouTube that I'm like currently obsessed with, and it's like the AI voices, like that they've been making of celebrities and stuff, using the AI voices and then like making fake podcasts or different things with their, you know, with their voices. But there's several different channels that make them. I can't think of any other names right now. Um, but they like just make videos of the different presidents like Bush, Biden, Obama, and Trump like playing games together or like going on different adventures and I find them probably way funnier than I should um, and I mean they have different ones too like I've seen a lot of like Ben Shapiro or Joe Rogan and stuff like that but I am very much enjoying these like AI voice comedy skit things and I'm like uh like I don't I've always been like a very early adopter when it comes to stuff and like always wanting the latest and greatest. But I think as I've gotten older, I've become more weary of like new technology. And I'm like, ugh, I feel like AI could lead to some really bad things. But I've also come to the realization that you either have to, there's no stop in the train. You either get on board with the new technology or you get left behind. So there's no point in fighting it. Anyway, I'm wary of AI, but I'm like, maybe we're in the golden age right now, because these AI voice comedy skits are, I love them. I think they're hilarious. But I'm like, I also could definitely see them being used as propaganda, 
because I don't want to get political at all on this channel, but just full disclosure, I'm not like a big fan of any of our politicians, regardless of party. I just, yeah. Anyway, I don't want to get too deep into it, but I feel like watching these videos has given me like more of a positive feeling towards all of the presidents. And I could definitely see it being used as propaganda. Like, it's basically making them into like cartoon characters. Can I like kill that salmon? Nice. Um, yeah, I could just see. out here so I like at least have a rough idea of oh, I guess I could build um, I guess I could build my base like build a ground level base on top of, of where this comes out of the ground that wouldn't be a terrible idea made. So yeah, I guess we'll continue building this out. Maybe I'll start on the surface level base in the next video, but I will leave it there. If you made it this far and you're not asleep, I would love a like or subscribe. That would mean so much to me, or even a comment, even a negative comment. Oh yeah, I want to make, I wanted to make glass really quick. So yeah, even a negative comment obviously would prefer a positive one, but any type of engagement just to prove that someone out there has seen any of these videos I'm making would uh, mean a lot. So yeah, thank you for spending your time with me, and I uh, hope to see you again soon.